Researchers have made solar-powered artificial plants that can take up radioactive waste directly from the soil. Not to be confused with synthetic plants, which can also make oxygen and have been considered for space travel. Nor should these be confused with hamsters who have had chloroplast from plants put into their cells. If you really want a photosynthetic hamster, we can talk about it. I have good news and bad news. Yes, their cells would be green. As for our synthetic plants that can clean up radioactive waste, yes, they use the power of the sun. Just through evaporation, the same way that plants get materials from the soil, they can take up things like cesium. Those can collect in the artificial plant, and the process will continue. At some point, these plants can be removed and properly stored. This has been successful in cleaning up to 90% of the cesium present in soil, and it can be used for other materials. This is actually incredibly useful, because normally, the only thing we can do with soil that's been contaminated is put it in a dome. And while, yes, cleaning up all the topsoil is potentially a solution, it's not a very good one. It's also a lot better to have that dome very far underground, because things like concrete do eventually crack and can leak, which has happened. What I do really like about this is that it does plagiarize from nature. Nature has had billions of years to develop the strategies that it has. Why don't we just borrow it, rather than trying to figure out our way through on our own? And of course, if you are really after a green hamster, it's partly possible. Yes, researchers were able to get chloroplasts into their cells stably, but they still lack the machinery in order to divide their cells and continue to maintain chloroplasts. So you would have to engineer all the genes to support chloroplasts into their DNA, and then what are you going to do with your green hamster, really? It might end up being highly overweight, because that's what plants do. They take in energy and they make sugar with it, so the plant can use it in their mitochondria. Yes, plants have mitochondria too. Hamsters still need things like micronutrients, so even if they just add all the access to the sugar, I'm not sure that would be healthy. I mean, this is kind of fun to see how things like chloroplasts and mitochondria ended up being stably in critters' cells, but not sure how useful it is. It is, however, very funny. And of course, developing synthetic plants that can take the same tools that plants use in order to take in light and create energy that can be used to clean oxygen. Of course, one might ask, why not just use actual plants? And that has been considered using things like algae in space, although one of the concerns is those populations can crash. If you have something synthetic that's not really alive and therefore can't die, then yeah, this, this has its uses. It's not all bad. And it could be used for terraforming, which has been considered. I personally think terraforming is kind of a waste of time for things like Mars. It doesn't have the capacity to hold an atmosphere. It doesn't have the geothermal activity that it needs in order to have oceans, in order to keep hydrous minerals as liquid water. So there's a lot of stuff that Mars just can't do, and even if we were to try to give it an atmosphere, it wouldn't hold on to it. However, Artificial photosynthesis may be useful inside of our biodomes. If they had biodomes in Mars and I could just take a nap and wake up there and not have to deal with space travel, I would go. So what do you think? Artificial photosynthesis useful for any of these things? I think cleaning up radioactive waste is actually an interesting one.